Hello everyone. Today I wanted to talk to you about water, which is the subject of Module 2 with the Indigenous Climate Action Program. I'm Im Leanne and I am the Lead Youth Educator with Isako Wong. I actually recommend that the best place to start with any learner is always about connection. So connecting your learner to their home, to the water that is within it, and having them ask questions and explore what water means to them. Because by building connection, we can create learners who care and who are going to act on those feelings to protect the environment, the water for current and future generations. So with water, it's literally all around us, not to mention in us as well. It's in the oceans, it's in the lakes, it's in the rivers, it's in the clouds. And there's lots of different things you can do with water to help your child really start to engage with the water that makes up their home. One of the best ways to do it is with puddles. As we splash in puddles, it's just a great way to have fun and to just enjoy water, right? But then it can also lead to further conversations. Where does that water go? Puddles aren't permanent, are they? Uh, then we can get into the details around the water cycle, how water moves around the earth, and how do we take care of that water? Because if we need to drink it and other animals like ourselves rely on it how do we take care of the water so some of the activities you can do in addition to jumping in puddles and talking about where that water goes includes just exploring the habitats around your house and you will be surprised at how quickly you find species that need water how deep do the tree roots go that they can access water? What grows on the trees, mosses and lichens, how do they get water? What do other animals do to get water? Slugs, snails, bears, where does their water come from? And how long can we survive without water? Not very long at all. And when we look at the mountains around us right now, what do we see up top? We see snow. And what is snow but if not just another form of water? Sure, we can go into toboggan in it. We can go snowshoeing. We can go skiing. It provides a great source of entertainment for us. But that snow also eventually ends up in our waterways when it melts. It is all connected. And some of the easiest ways to take care of our water are to do things like being aware of where our garbage goes. Are you picking up your litter? When you're out on the beach, if you see a piece of plastic, do you think you could pick it up? And what animals do you hear that rely on the water? What different, do you see different birds, different frogs, different insects when you're by the ocean versus by a lake or a stream? What about turtles? What about snails? What about fish? What fish can your learners name? What type of habitat do all of those animals need? and what part of their life cycle brings them into those different habitats. There's always different keywords too that we can be conscious of when talking to our learners about water. You know, for example, rather than just saying water this, water that, well, what about the different bodies of water can we name? Rivers, creeks, brooks, lakes, ponds. And then there's different types of ponds. There's tide pools, there's vernal pools, 
there are what else haven't I named there's the ocean there's the sea what is a sea versus the ocean what is an estuary ultimately what I would suggest is don't be afraid to get out and play in the water obviously it's important to be safe at the same time so a couple little things obviously don't go out in thunderstorms if there's lightning stay inside and if you're jumping in puddles just check first that there's no big sharp objects or anything inside of them because otherwise you might want to keep your shoes on as much as I like to advocate for being barefoot uh, you want to be careful with that as well so go out explore your your water habitats the water homes around you pay attention to the different animals and sounds that you see and hear and let that be a source of inquiry for your young learner and don't forget to visit our activity guide online it's got ideas for activities that you can do with your learners both games and crafts and it's got some good prompts as well there that you might want to use if you're out with your learner walking by a water body as with anything when learning about home and now water it's about having fun it's about learning and listening, using all of your senses to just really engage in water, in home.